What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video that's a little bit different from everything that I've done on this channel before and that is opening one of these guys. Now, if you follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, I kind of talked about uh, the Motorola Razr V3 um, and I kind of asked you guys, like, should I use one of these for a week? Uh, and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, you guys said yes. Now, what I thought was going to be just like a cool ex little experiment got me doing hours of research on how I can actually use one of these in 2018. Now, this I ordered off of eBay and it claims to be a factory uh, new brand new Motorola Razr V3. This is the black one. Um, but I'm not, I, I think that's probably true. I do think that the device has never been used, but this is not the original packaging, at least from what I can remember and from what I can find on the internet. Now, I think that they're back when this guy came out in 2004, there were different devices. There were different kinds of the razor that you can purchase based on which uh, provider that you get which is very similar to how Android devices are still today I think um, like there's base Android and then there's Android um, with like Verizon's watermark and things like that so it was very much the same back in the day um, and I think this is the China mobile one even though it's loaded with English software so I don't know what the story is behind this one apparently it's brand new um, it's got all of the information on the side here let's just pop this open so this is not gonna be a great unboxing uh, and you'll see why in a second so right there is the phone and this is how this is seriously how it was packaged uh, in this little bag here and then we have where the phone was sitting and underneath we've got <laughs> We've got the manual, the user manual, user guide, sorry, which is literally one piece of paper folded in half, and a power adapter that does, act, it is actually Motorola branded. Now that doesn't mean that this is legit, um, but I think it is. I wanna say it is, even though this is clearly low quality packaging and uh, I don't think it's the one that it was originally. Again, here's the Motorola. Um, logo so yeah that's what's in the box that is unboxing the Motorola Razr V3 the one that you guys probably remember from 2004 now inside this bag is the phone and that's the unboxing um, this was if you guys don't know what this phone is if you guys are too young to know what the Razr uh, V3 was then you know this was like the iPhone before the iPhone um, this was like the phone that everybody wanted or had back in 2004. Yeah, I really do not think that this is actually, the more I'm looking at this, I don't know if this is real, but um, we're gonna see. Or if it is real, maybe this was a later printing of the phone uh, because that Motorola logo, I remember that being shiny, so but that might have been, uh, there were multiple versions of the V3. There was the V3i, V3r, V3m, V3x, V3xx. There was tons of versions of this phone um, and all sorts of colors and promotional colors and things like that. So I don't know, uh, maybe this was like, you know, when they, when they realized that this phone was losing market share, nobody cared because everyone was moving towards, uh, I think it was 3G phones that they started, you know, decreasing the quality of the phone to save in uh, costs, seeing as how they weren't selling so many. So here we are pulling the plastic off the screen. And there are no scratches on the device at all, so I don't think it was actually used. I don't think this is a used phone. I just think this might be a really good Chinese knockoff, if it is. Um, so I'm just peeling off all of these stickers, or not stickers, but like the protective coatings on here. Okay, that is it. We have all of the plastic off of the phone. So it's completely black on the entire device. And that looks kind of, the keypad looks lower quality than I remember. So again, this might not be real, but it does power on. Um, and that is the actual software, which is, oh, it's 
making little popping noises. Now we're not going to get very far because I don't have a SIM card for this phone. Um, so let me explain to you kind of what uh, I have gone through with this device. Now I have ordered a SIM card um, that I think is going to work and I've done a lot of research um, trying to figure out what mobile network to use this on. So this uses an original SIM card, oh, not original because the original SIM cards were like the size of this phone, but uh, I think it uses, it's bigger than, I think it's called a standard SIM if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's bigger than a micro SIM. So yeah, uh, so that's what goes in this phone. It actually goes, you have to open up the back and it goes behind the battery. So now the deal with the Motorola Razr V3 is that this is a 2G only phone. Um, if you get the original V3 Razr, which is what this is, uh, it is only, it's only usable on a 2G network. It actually has no edge network capabilities to my knowledge. I don't think it can go on the 2.5G as edge network. Um, it doesn't have 3G, 4G, any of that stuff. So if you have a SIM card that is, you know, a newer SIM card, or if you have a cell phone provider who only has those newer bands, you know, like AT&T actually no longer has the 2G network. They shut that down at in December of 2016, I believe. Um, and I don't think Verizon has a 2G network either. They, at the lowest, they have the edge network maybe, but that might not even be true anymore. So when you're getting a phone like this, you know, you would think it's just as easy as like, oh, I'll just pop a SIM card in there and then, you know, whatever. Um, but that's not the case. Now, this is also a GSM only phone, so it still can't be used on Sprint or Verizon no matter what. Um, so it does have to be on AT&T or on T-Mobile. But like I said, AT&T doesn't have a 2G network. So that leaves me with T-Mobile, right? That's T-Mobile is the only one that technically still has a 2G network. And from what I can tell and what I'm from what I'm reading online, uh, their 2G network is kind of on life support. It's kind of really bad. Um, so I ordered a SIM card from Simple Mobile, which uses T-Mobile towers. Apparently on their website, it says they still have, they, you still get 2G. Um, and that's what I want to use this for. Now, I, I really just want the cheapest plan because I want to use this for like a week just to see what it, you know, kind of see what it was like uh, texting on something like this um, and not having data, not having Instagram on here, not having Facebook or, you know, anything like that. You know, no iMessage. It's strictly text and calls. Um, so anyway, what, what did this cost back when this came out? This phone came out, like I said, in 2004. Uh, and this phone retailed for 600 US dollars. Um, now they quickly, with the success of this phone, started offering a rebate for the phone. You also could, you know, if you locked into a contract, you could get it for cheaper, which is how things used to work. These days, cell phone providers actually just give you a loan for the phone and you pay the full amount. Except technically Sprint still has a two year contract thing, but you still get charged extra fees for it. So you kind of are paying the whole thing. But regardless, um, back in the day, this was $600. So that means today with inflation from 2004 to 2018, there's been like a 33, 34% inflation um, would be equivalent to about $800 for this phone, which is the cost equivalent of an iPhone 8 plus 64 gigabyte uh, retail unlocked out of the box, which is insane to think that this thing costs as much, uh, or costed as much as an iPhone, which means that the cost of phones really hasn't gone up over the last 14 years, technically. In fact, the iPhone 8, uh, is $699, which is $700, which is actually pretty much cheaper than this, or equivalent to this with the rebate that you would get when you bought the phone. So, that's insane. Um, so what did I pay for this? for this new phone. Again, I don't actually, I never had one of these when I was younger, so I don't really remember the packaging. Like I said, the packaging, I believe varied. There were different bundles. I think you could get like a T-Mobile packaging or an AT&T, or I'm sorry, not a singular packaging because there was not uh, an AT&T back then. But um, I don't, I don't know this. I'm really not sure if this is the original phone or not, or if this is just a China mobile, really good knockoff. Um, but it does say China Mobile on the back there, right there. But anyway, um, so how much did I pay for this new phone? This was uh, $50. It's $50, um, and this is new. So used, these guys are going for about 30 bucks. So that's what a $600 phone is worth 
in 2018, it is about 30 to $50 uh, max, max. And like I said, this is quote unquote new. Um, and I wanted to see what it would be like if I got it new. This is an iPhone 5S uh, and it is a little bit smaller as you can see. Um, if we take a look here, it's a bit thicker, uh, but when you open it up, it's obviously longer and also thinner. So, you know, it takes up probably, I would say less space in your pocket, even though it is a bit thicker. Um, it still is a, a shorter phone, so it's probably easier to fit in your pocket. Um, so that just give you like a little size comparison. I wish I could show you with my iPhone 10, but I'm using that to record. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to unbox the Motorola Razr V3 because it's a huge throwback. Again, like I said earlier, if you guys were, you know, around in like elementary school, middle school, um, or even high school in 2004, 2005, even in 2006, uh, this, this phone was everywhere. This was like the iPhone. This thing was... Everybody wanted one, it sold millions of devices back in the day, hundreds of millions of devices in fact, um, and it was just like the phone to have. You know, it wasn't the best phone out there, but it was designed, it, the design was so sleek and thin and angular and it was just, you know, it was iconic. Everybody, if you pulled this out, people were like, oh wow, he has a razor. So, and again, at the time it was an expensive phone. So. That's why I wanted to buy this today. I wanted to unbox it for you guys, show you what it was like, and give you a little bit of nostalgia, uh, kind of talk to you about you know the cost of phones and how it's changed over the years, um, and kind of just give you a comparison to see what, it, what it's like compared to the iPhone 5S and the cellular networks that it would be compatible with, with only 2G. So that's about it, guys. Like I said, thank you so much for watching. This has been OmniArc. Now, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on my notifications because I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to this, attempting to use this for a week, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of information about why I'm doing that, uh, as well as my experience uh, doing that with the Motorola Razr in 2018. So we'll find out if it's possible. I don't know. I've been doing research. It might not be possible, but we will see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been OmniArch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.